I was picking him up to take him to rehearsal. He was trying to get Paula out for Christmas with the kids because he wanted to line Paula up with this TV station that were interested in having her host a show. Yeah, I'm living in London at the moment and I really want to, you know, I'd love to get back to Australia and get back to my family, really. Mm. Do you miss your family when you're on tour? Because it's like of course, long yeah. tours and... I miss my family for, for an hour. He'd play me a few of his solo things he was working on. And I remember him playing this one particular track. He said, look, this is the only track I'm happy with. All the rest is shit. So I gave him a call and he said, look, I can't go out tonight, I'm exhausted. I said, no problem, we'll, I'll come and see you after the show. I was with a couple of friends of mine. We went to the Ritz Carlton. I went to the telephone and I rang up Michael and I said, I'm downstairs near the bar, are you coming down? He goes, look, I'm just exhausted, I don't want to come down, why don't you come up? And I said, well, I don't really want to come up. I kind of had this fight with him and just went back to the bar, bought some more drinks, put them on his room tab in anger. And then I thought, no, fuck, I do want to see him. I rang him up again, but the phone just rang out. So I didn't actually get to see him. He was happy when we met him, but at the dinner, no, it was, it was uh, a lot of ranting, literally ranting. And that's when Kel went and said, son, you're all right. He felt that he was on medication. And that was the last time you saw him? Skipping away, he literally skipped over to the hotel and he looked very as he could, you know, happy and carefree. There was a message on the answer machine from Michael saying, having a few people over, um, why don't you, look, you know, you and Louise come over, um, having some drinks and stuff like that. I was catching up on a bit of tour accounting at four o'clock in the morning, and I remember going down to get some photocopies made. I came back up on the left with a waiter who had a tray with drinks. He headed the other way down the corridor. I thought, I know where he's going. And I did actually think, maybe I'll just go and knock on the door and see what's going on. But then I thought, well, maybe not. Might not be the best time. You do think, well, maybe if I had have done, there would have been some company, somebody he knew. He rang people, can you come over? He had people staying with him till 5 a.m. Part of him was a little bit scared of what would happen if he was left to his own devices. He knew that he was facing some really stressful news and he was trying to mitigate it with alcohol and with company. The alcohol is not a good way to mitigate it. It tends to make you more impulsive, more erratic, more depressed. And in the final moments, you know, he did find himself alone.